Hi guys, today we're looking at atomic physics. We're going to look at the detection of radiation, background radiation, the types of radiation, and then we're going to look at some nuclear equations, and then just look at some safety concerns as well. Okay, so starting off, we're talking about the detection of radioactivity. Now what you guys can see here is a Geiger Muller tube. It's got a thin mica window here. Radiation will pass in, and there's a, uh, a gas and it's a partial vacuum. Now when a piece of radiation comes in, an atom inside, uh, the electron could, uh, the electrons from the atom could end up leaving the atom, they'll become ionized. And what we've got here is a charged rod called the uh, anode, which is positively charged, and we've got a cathode which is negatively charged. And what happens is that the electrons move towards the anode because it's positively charged. The ions move towards the cathode because that's negatively charged. So when that happens, a very small current flows through here. Normally there's no current flowing through here, but the, you need a high voltage, so around 500 volts. Uh, when the radiation comes in, uh, electrons get knocked off. And in fact, what can happen is something called a cascade effect where and the electron will bump into more atoms and more atoms and more atoms and suddenly you get a whole flood of electrons moving this way and a whole flood of ions moving in this direction. Uh, the machine here, the counter, will notice a very short, quick pulse of current. Then eventually this thing will stabilize again uh, and then it will register a count here. Or you may hear a little click. Now all around us is something called background radiation. Now background radiation is generally a low level radiation that comes from a number of different sources. It could be coming from rocks, uh, cosmic rays, and even uh, the remnants of old nuclear tests. It's normally at a low level and it's completely safe uh, for human beings. Types of radiation. There are actually three types of radiation. Two of them are particles. Uh, the first type is called alpha particles. Uh, they are actually helium nuclei. Uh, they consist of two protons and two neutrons. They've got a positive charge. The second type of particle is a, called beta particles, and they are actually high-speed electrons. The reason why they've got these unusual names, alpha, beta, and also even gamma, is that people didn't really know what they were a uh, hundred years ago when they were discovering these kind of things, so they just started calling them alpha, beta, and gamma, and it's only later on we started to understand what the nature of these things are. And then finally, there's gamma radiation. Now, gamma actually isn't a particle. It's actually a high-frequency electromagnetic waves. And it actually is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it belongs right at the far end. Very, very high frequency, very short wavelength, very high energy electromagnetic waves. So here's a table with a summary uh, and the effects of uh, these types of radiation. So alpha... Uh, the relative speed is actually the largest and the slowest. Beta is kind of in the medium. Uh, and uh, gamma is the smallest and the fastest. The kinetic energy, alpha has actually got the lowest. Uh, gamma has got the highest. Penetration ability, how deep will it go into matter? Well, alpha is actually stopped by 10 centimeters of air or even a thin sheet of paper. And in fact, the skin of a human being is enough to stop uh, alpha. Uh, beta, it's kind of blocked by a sheet of aluminium. About two millimeters of aluminium will block beta. Whereas gamma, uh, it's reduced by a few centimeters of lead. But in even th that word there, it's reduced. Some will still get th through even a few centimeters of lead. Now, ionization ability is the ability to knock electrons off atoms. Now, alpha is very, very ionizing, whereas gamma is weakly ionizing. Alpha is the most dangerous inside the body because of this penetration ability. It can't get out of the body. But if it's inside your body, so if it's outside your body, your skin will block it. So alpha is not very dangerous outside of the body, but it's incredibly dangerous when it's inside the body. Uh, gamma is the most dangerous when outside the body because it's got a very high penetration ability. It can easily pass through your body and cause you harm in your organs. The alpha decay equation. So here we've got an atom, we're just going to call it X. It's got a nucleon number of A and a proton number of Z. Now, the daughter nucleus, after the 
air uh, after the alpha particle decay, the, the alpha particle will come out of the nucleus. What happens is, because if you think of it like the, there's an, a number of marbles in a bag, you can imagine you had a number of marbles, four of those marbles left, so what are you left with? Well, it's A minus four. Two of the marbles happen to be colored red. So here's your number of red marbles. So what have you got? You've got uh, uh, Z minus two. Okay, so just remember the numbers on the top, whatever you got on the before the arrow should equal to whatever you got after the arrow. So A minus four plus four is equal to A. Z is equal to Z minus two plus two. Okay, so next up is the beta decay equation. Now this time we've got our nucleus again with a nuclear number of A and a proton number of Z. Now, a beta particle, because it's an electron, it actually isn't a nucleon. It's not a proton, it's not a neutron, so the nucleon number here is zero. So with the beta decay equation, the daughter nucleus has got exactly the same nucleon number as where it came from. But, because the electron is negative, what happens in beta decay is that a neutron inside the uh, mother nucleus, I guess you could call it, actually turns into a, uh, a proton. So the proton number actually increases. So you can think of it again, going back to the analogy of marbles in a bag. If you imagine you had a number of marbles in a, in a, ba in a bag, some of them are white marbles, some of them are red. Effectively, what happens is you've got the same number of marbles in your bag, just one of the white marbles turned into a red marble. And that's why the number goes up there. You've got more red marbles than you started with, but the total number of marbles is the same. I hope this is making sense. Okay, and then finally some safety precautions. Keep the samples in a lead-lined containers. So keep any samples that you've got in a lead-lined container because lead, uh, it's difficult to penetrate through. Even gamma is reduced, so it will effectively reduce the risk of any kind of uh, radiation exposure. Wear gloves. Obviously, beta and gamma would still pass through gloves, but what you don't want to, to get is any kind of radiation on your hands. For example, something that's giving off alpha, and then you go ahead and touch your mouth, then you'll ingest something that's giving off alpha, which is potentially very dangerous. You could wet, uh, hide behind some lead glass. So uh, that's a glass that's got uh, lead particles inside, or wear a lead apron. Minimize the exposure time. So try and avoid being near the thing that's giving off the radiation in the first place. And then finally, keep your distance. So keep as far away from whatever's giving off the radiation uh, to kind of minimize the exposure that you're going to get. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe. That way you can uh, keep updated with any new videos that I make. Good luck in your exams.